Welcome back to Suggestive Gaming's celebration of Tomb Raider's 25th anniversary. Last time, fellow YouTuber Steve Avor and I looked over the storyline of the original classic Tomb Raider series dating from 1996 to 2003, so if you haven't already checked that out, make sure you do to get the complete experience. This time, Steve and I will be looking at Crystal Dynamics' first take at rebooting Lara Croft's story. Once again, I would like to thank the sponsor for this series, Display. If you'd like to check out their vast collection of high-quality wall art, printed on demand on easy-to-hang metal posters, please do so by clicking my referral link in the description. Not only can you check out some art I recommend, but you'll also get 20% off your purchase applied at checkout through the month of April. Now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about Tomb Raider Legends Timeline. Our story begins once again in 1945 in Los Alamos, New Mexico, where a nuclear bomb test destroys an abandoned town, but also blasts open a strange crystalline structure and a mysterious winged creature escapes from it, flying away from the blast. Over 40 years later, in 1986, Lady Amelia Croft, Countess of Abingdon, is flying over the Himalayan mountains in a private plane with her nine-year-old daughter, Lara. Suddenly, one of the engines bursts into flame, and the aircraft crashes into the mountains below, leaving Amelia and Lara as the only survivors. The pair find an ancient Buddhist temple nearby and take shelter, where Lara finds a sword housed inside a mysterious stone dais. Lara touches the sword, accidentally activating a mechanism. Amelia begins to hear a voice speak to her from the other side of a portal, and she frantically pulls the sword from the pedestal, causing an explosion. When Lara opens her eyes, she finds the mechanism disabled, but also discovers the sword, as well as her mother, to have vanished. She then tears out a few pages of her journal and leaves them there, as she leaves the temple to find a way to contact her father, archaeologist Lord Richard Croft. Lara's father takes her under his wing, taking her on his expeditions, training her as an archaeologist. However, much like his wife, he wound up going missing in Cambodia when Lara was 17. Lara continues her schooling in archaeology, meeting another young woman named Amanda Evert, who she quickly becomes best friends with. The two go with their classmates on an expedition in Peru, and while exploring an underground cavern, their group is attacked by a demonic-looking creature surrounded by black smoke. Lara runs from the creature to find Amanda investigating a stone relic she hopes will open the nearby door. Despite Lara's hesitation, Amanda pulls the stone from its pedestal, causing the creature to disappear. However, they soon hear a loud rumble as the cave starts to collapse. Lara escapes through a gate that closes behind her. She tries to keep it open long enough for Amanda to escape, but the area begins to flood with water. Amanda's foot gets stuck, and she's unable to escape through the gate. Lara watches more rocks fall from above, separating her from her friend, as she is forced to drop the gate and leave Amanda behind, escaping as the only survivor of the tragedy. Sometime shortly afterwards, Lara travels to Calcutta, India, where she is approached by a mercenary named Larson Conway, who introduces her via video call to Jacqueline Natler, CEO of one of the world's largest tech companies, Google. I mean, Natler Technologies. Natler reveals that her research department has found Qualapec's tomb, the first step in locating the Skion of Atlantis, a relic that Lara and her father have spent years searching for. This, of course, intrigues Lara, who then accepts Natla's offer and travels to Peru to find the tomb for herself. Shortly after beginning to explore through the tomb, Lara finds a lost valley where dinosaurs have somehow survived, and after killing a Tyrannosaurus Rex, she is able to find Qualapex's resting place. There she reads some nearby inscriptions and learns that he was once one of the three god kings of Atlantis, known collectively as the Triumvirate. Each of the three carried a piece of the ski on, and Lara is able to grab Qualapex's sweet piece right before the tomb begins to collapse around her, forcing her to make a daring escape just as Qualapex's body begins to reanimate. As she exits, she comes across Larson again, who attempts to take the ski on from her, but she easily bests him in combat and interrogates him to learn that Natla has sent Pierre Dupont, an archaeological rival to Lara, to search out another piece of the ski on. Lara then travels to Facebook, I mean Natla Technologies headquarters, and breaks into Natla's office to find more information on Pierre's whereabouts. There she finds recordings from Larson and Pierre, and she learns that Pierre is looking underneath a place called St. Francis Folly in Greece. Lara travels to St. Francis Folly and eventually finds the tomb of another member of the Triumvirate, Tihoken. There she finds the second piece of the Skion, but when she opens Tihoken's coffin, she finds it to be completely empty. 
Suddenly, she is held at gunpoint by Pierre, who demands that the other piece of the ski on Lara found in Peru be handed over. Lara is able to fight him off, but he is able to run off with one of the pieces. However, outside, Pierre is attacked and killed by two animated centaur statues. Lara fights the centaurs, defeating them and gathering the second piece of the ski on. When she combines it together with the first piece she found in Peru, Lara is suddenly overcome by a vision. No, not that one. In it, Lara sees Tihoken scolding a third god for maiming her brother, Qualapec, by somehow using the ski on. Before the third god can speak for herself, the vision ends and Lara knows where to find the final piece of the ski on, at a place called the Sanctuary of the Ski on in Egypt. Lara eventually arrives there and fights her way through more animated guardians to find the final piece of the ski on. After grabbing it, the temple begins to collapse around her, and she dashes out of a nearby exit to reach the valley outside. There she assembles the complete ski on and witnesses the vision once again, but now with complete clarity. The third god in the triumvirate is revealed to be none other than Natla herself, who had used the knowledge of the ski on to turn Atlantis's army against itself to destroy the civilization so that it could begin anew in the Seventh Age. As punishment, Tihokan and Qualapec banish her in a frozen prison structure for all eternity. That is until she was freed by the nuclear explosion in the New Mexico desert in 1945. Lara, being distracted by the vision, doesn't realize that Natla has arrived, who takes the ski on away and has her henchmen, including Larson, detain Lara and strip her weapons away. Natla heads off, leaving her men to deal with Lara, however Lara breaks free and incapacitates them before diving into the waters below, with Larson intentionally barging one of them out of the way so he can miss a clear shot to secretly spare her life. Swimming back to shore, she then follows Natla's car on her motorcycle and is able to catch up as Natla boards her yacht. Using a nearby ramp, she is able to dive off her bike and into the water, and then sneaks aboard the vessel to stow away in the ship's cargo hold. Lara swims to the island and begins to investigate and reclaim her lost gear, but is soon stopped by Larson. Lara threatens Larson to move out of the way before she shoots him, but he taunts her, knowing she doesn't have it in her to kill another person. She calls his bluff, however, and shoots him three times in the chest, killing him on the spot. Despite her initial coldness at doing what had to be done to stop Natla, Lara looks down at the figurative blood on her hands and instantly feels regret for taking another life. Lara continues on to find a giant stone pyramid guarded by Natla's remaining henchmen. However, their lack of teamwork leads to their deaths at each other's hands, and Lara is able to enter the pyramid. Inside, Lara sees Natla at the very top, and she uses the now-completed ski on to activate the ancient pyramid, causing various monstrous creatures, including a fleshy doppelganger of herself, to awaken and impede her progress. Lara fights her way to the top, finding the ski on, and alongside it, Natla in her original Atlantean form. Natla reveals that by using the ski on, she intends to create her own new race to destroy humanity. She then offers Lara a seat at the throne next to her, claiming that it is her destiny. But Lara, knowing that she cannot sacrifice all of humanity for her own power and immortality, says a solemn posthumous apology to her father before shooting the ski on to destroy it. Natla then lunges at her, pushing them both off the balcony where they stand. Lara is able to grapple to a nearby ledge, but Natla falls into the lava below. On the platform, Lara is soon confronted by the awakened giant beast of Natla's creation. She's able to defeat the creature, leaving it plunging into the lava below before she goes to leave the Great Pyramid. Before she can escape, however, Lara is again confronted by Natla, now in a fiery demonic form. Natla claims that since Lara is also a killer now, that the two of them aren't so different, and a battle then ensues. After the fight, Natla disarms Lara and taunts her for not accomplishing anything by stopping her. She claims that other remnants of Atlantis remain, and that she'll find a way in succeeding in her plan. But then, Lara grabs her pistol and shoots Natla, distracting her long enough to be able to pull a pillar down on top of her, which crushes her rival and allows her to escape the collapsing pyramid. Outside, Lara swims to Natla's yacht and sails off into the sunset, finally free of the whole ordeal. Looking at her hands once again, she realizes that Natla was wrong about her, as what she did was for the good of all humankind and not for selfish personal gain. Years later, Lara is now an experienced adventurer, and now hunts for artifacts alongside her new partners and companions, Zip, her tech expert, and Alistair Fletcher, her research assistant. She receives a tip from one of her former university classmates, Anaya Imanu, about a stone dais that's similar to the one that she saw in the Himalayas as a child. Still hoping to uncover the mystery of her mother's disappearance, Lara travels to the temple of an ancient civilization called Tiwanaku in Bolivia. 
After exploring it, she finds the stone Dias, but unfortunately a team of mercenaries has beaten her to its discovery. Their leader, adventurer James Rutland, notices Lara and reveals that he has obtained a piece of a sword, much like the one that had disappeared with her mother. As he turns to leave, he gestures to a blonde woman in a nearby helicopter who he refers to as Amanda before referencing their expedition to Peru, where her old friend Amanda Everett seemingly died, leading Lara to wonder if she'd actually somehow survived. After Rutland leaves, Lara fights off the mercenaries that he left behind, and then after dispatching them all, she is able to investigate the dais, discovering it to be identical to the one where her mother disappeared. She then returns home and discusses her findings with Zip, Alistair, and her lifelong butler Winston. Zip recommends that Lara tries returning to the archaeological dig site in Peru to learn what Rutland discovered there. Lara returns to Peru, where she meets with her contact Anaya, and then after fighting off an ambush by Rutland's militia, the pair reach the old boarded up dig site, and Lara is able to swim back into the flooded chamber where she left Amanda. There, Lara is able to drain the water and discovers an unlaced shoe, revealing that Amanda was able to get her foot unstuck and escape the tomb. Lara then finds an inscription detailing the story of the last queen of Tiwanaku. The story immediately strikes Lara as similar to the myth of King Arthur, and after traversing through more of the tomb, she finds more inscriptions and learns that there are multiple stone dioceses, and each is activated by inserting an appropriate sword. Lara then finds the queen's sarcophagus as well as a ceremonial replica of her sword, which resembles the piece that Rutland was holding before. She recognizes a piece broken off the replica sword as an artifact she saw in the Waseda University in Japan. However, it was stolen by the Yakuza boss Shogo Takamoto, and Lara instructs Zip to arrange a meeting with him. Just then, Anaya calls and warns that Rutland's men are heading into the tomb after her, so Lara then fights her way out of the tomb, meeting Anaya outside so they can escape. Lara shows Anaya Amanda's shoe, and the two theorize that she must have found something in the tomb that she wanted to keep for herself, hence why she kept her survival a complete secret. As the two go to leave, Lara calls Zip for an update on the meeting with Takamoto, and he lets her know that the meeting has been arranged at a corporate party hosted by a mutual friend named Toru Nishimura. The next day, Lara arrives in Tokyo, then heads to the party to meet with Nishimura in his office. The two share pleasantries, and when Lara goes to re-enter the main area, Takamoto arrives with his Yakuza crew, breaking up the party. He refuses to negotiate with Lara, still holding a grudge over their last encounter where he tried to forge artifacts. Angered by their confrontation, he commands his men to attack Lara as he escapes, but she grabs the weapons she smuggled in and fights them off. Lara regroups with Nishimura, who warns against following Takamoto, but nonetheless gives her a key to the elevator to reach the roof so she can reach his penthouse. Lara goes to the roof, and once there she finds a motorcycle stashed in a shipping crate, which she is able to use to jump the gap to the next door building and work her way up to Takamoto's penthouse. There, she confronts Takamoto, who once again runs, and Lara has to fight through more of his men to follow him up to the top floor. There, Takamoto is waiting for her, with the tip of the sword fashioned as the tip of a spear. He is able to hone the power of the relic to give him mystical powers, but Lara is able to defeat him in battle, killing him and retrieving the fragment of the sword. Nishimura then arrives in a helicopter and gives her a ride. Whilst in the helicopter, Lara gets word from Zip that Rutland is in Ghana, so she makes her way there to take his fragment of the sword. Once there, Lara uncovers a temple behind a waterfall, and finds Rutland on a level above her. The two share some quick banter before Lara heads inside to follow him. Lara recognizes the temple from her father's writings, leaving her to believe he had been there before. This suspicion is seemingly confirmed when she comes across a pendant on the ground that once belonged to her mother. Lara finally reaches Rutland deep within the temple, and he reveals that he is searching for the Galali key, which will allow him to put the sword back together. Rutland tells Lara that Amanda believes that Lara's father had found the key, and proceeds to attack her. Like Takamoto, he exhibits mystical powers, but Lara is able to defeat him in combat. Afterwards, Lara takes the sword fragment from Rutland, who reveals that Amanda is at her mansion right now searching for the Galali key. Lara speeds off on her motorbike to return home and finally reaches Zip, who reveals that he and Alistair are safe, but Amanda had attacked the mansion alongside a monster cloaked in black smoke. Alistair announces that he's discovered Amanda's next destination to be Kazakhstan, so Lara decides to head there to chase Amanda instead. Lara arrives in Kazakhstan and finds Rutland's men attacking a military base. Lara takes out the mercenaries, and two Kazakh soldiers give her the access codes to a nearby command station. There she finds the location of an old Soviet lab she suspects Amanda to be heading to, 
then takes a nearby motorbike to catch up to a departing train to reach the lab herself. Lara infiltrates the lab by crashing a train into it and finds Amanda inside, finally seeing her old friend face to face once again. Lara apologizes to Amanda for leaving her behind years ago, but Amanda, still upset about the past, nevertheless shrugs it off, leaving the area as one of her guards blows up the nearby bridge to prevent Lara from following her. Lara looks for a way around the broken bridge, finding a medieval shield with a map inscribed on the back in the process. She takes pictures of the map and sends it back to Alistair, hoping its resemblance to King Arthur's shield isn't just a coincidence. When Lara catches up, she finds Amanda, who reveals that she still carries the stone she grabbed in the catacombs during their expedition. She then shows Lara that the stone allows her to control the smoke-covered beast that killed her friends. Lara is able to fend off the beast using machinery in the lab and obtains the sword fragment powering it. This then blows up an exit and Lara watches Amanda walk off before escaping through the ventilation system. Alistair determines that the map takes them to Cornwall, England, to a roadside novelty attraction called Professor Worth's King Arthur Museum, and the trio travel there to investigate. Inside, underneath all the dioramas, animatronics and decor, Lara discovers a tomb containing King Arthur and the Court of Camelot. Lara is able to obtain his final piece of the sword before getting a frantic call from Zip and Alistair back at street level, indicating a commotion of sort. Lara finds and battles an ancient sea serpent as she attempts to reach the surface, but is able to escape it and reach Zip and Alistair outside, saving them from a gun-wielding team of mercenaries. The three return back to the mansion to figure out how to assemble the sword. As Lara puts the pieces together, she recognizes the shape of an indentation as a pendant her mother wore in a portrait in the mansion's main hall. Lara determines that the pendant must now lie where her mother was last seen, and makes arrangements to travel to the Himalayas to find it. Once there, she finds the wreckage of the plane she crashed in and finds her mother's pendant inside. She grabs it, but shifting the weight causes the plane to fall down to the mountains below. With the pendant in hand, Lara walks down to the temple where her mother disappeared and uses it to reassemble the pieces of the sword. She attempts to put it back into the stone dais where it came from, but it simply crumbles beneath the sword. Lara is then able to use the power of the sword to exit the temple as it collapses and returns to Bolivia to use the sword in the dais there. Lara approaches the stone, finding Rutland, Amanda, and their mercenaries are waiting for her. She then uses the sword to fend off the mercenaries, but the initial blast from the sword ends up killing Rutland, which greatly upsets Amanda. Amanda, distraught about her loss, as well as Lara getting to use the sword instead of her, grabs her stone and calls forth her monster. Lara is able to defeat the monster with the sword, and an exhausted Amanda is left collapsed on the ground. Lara takes the Wraithstone amulet from her and then proceeds to plunge the sword into the dais. Runes begin to light up on the stone pillars and Lara recognizes them for the temple in the Himalayas as a child. As she pushes the sword deeper, a portal begins to open and she sees her mother. Lara realizes it was her that her mother was speaking to in the portal all those years ago and tries to tell her not to touch the sword. Amanda, however, yells out for Lara to pull out the sword or else the portal will explode. Amelia hears Amanda and believing that the warning was to be for her, pulls out the sword, leading to her disappearance in the past, as well as all of the events that have transpired. The portal explodes, and Lara blaming Amanda for her mother's death now, pulls a pistol out on her and angrily asks, Where is my mother? Amanda proclaims that Amelia is not dead, but instead went to Avalon, the mythical island of Arthurian legend that the portal supposedly opened up to. Lara, still in disbelief, decides to pistol whip Amanda, knocking her unconscious instead of killing her. Then she leaves Bolivia, now with the knowledge that her father, who had previously believed that Amelia had never died, was actually correct. Determined to make things right, she starts a new journey to find Avalon and finally rescue her mother. Sometime later, Lara learns that her father believed the path to Avalon lay at the bottom of a location in the Mediterranean Sea. She travels there by yacht, despite Alistair's protests, and swims down to find ruins labeled as Niflheim, the Realm of the Dead, which Lara determines to be the Norse equivalent to Avalon. Inside, she finds a large statue of Thor, the Norse god of thunder, as well as one of his gauntlets, used to wield his mighty hammer, Mjolnir. Lara retrieves the gauntlet, but before she can surmise what it has to do with Avalon, she is ambushed by a group of mercenaries, who knock her out and take the gauntlet. When she awakens, one of the mercenaries tells her Amanda Evert sends her regards, before triggering an explosive device, causing a cave-in and sealing the exit. 
Lara quickly climbs out of the ruins and swims back to her boat. There, she is able to spot Amanda's ship in the nearby waters. Lara climbs onto the ship and fights her way through Amanda's mercenaries to the lower decks. There, she is able to find Amanda, who is speaking with an unknown woman about the gauntlet now being bound to Lara, rendering it useless to Amanda. Amanda is forced to run off when she learns her ship is taking in water due to Lara's firepower, and when Lara walks in to investigate the second woman, she is shocked to learn that it is none other than Jacqueline Natla, who was dug up and captured by Amanda and her crew sometime before the events in Bolivia. Natla confirms that the dais they found was only part of a transportation network of portals, and Lara's mother was taken to Avalon. She then states that Lara's father found the wrong Norse underworld, as Amelia was not taken to Niflheim, but instead Helheim. Lara asks where it is, and Natla responds that she'll need Thor's hammer to get there, and that she needs to find her answers in Thailand. Natla's pod is then extracted by a helicopter, and Lara escapes from the now sinking ship. Outside, she sees Amanda and fires a few shots at her, prompting her to throw the gauntlet into the water. Lara jumps after it, retrieving it before returning to her boat to watch Amanda's helicopter fly off. Lara travels to the coast of Thailand and finds another underworld similar to Niflheim. Using the gauntlet, she is able to open a passageway to an area with a giant statue of Odin, Thor's father. From nearby inscriptions, she learns that Odin gave his son the gauntlets, his belt Megangjord, as well as Mjolnir to keep the world serpent, Jormungandr, subdued. However, Lara finds the map leading to these objects destroyed, and a pedestal nearby, which once housed the twin gauntlet, is now empty. On the pedestal, however, she finds a message written by her own father, directed towards Natla, proclaiming that he is no longer her puppet, indicating the pair had worked together in some capacity in the past. She then notices that he signed the note with his middle initial, which he never did to avoid confusion with his own father. This clue tips off Lara to where her father hid the gauntlet, his own home. She returns to the boat, finding her gauntlet now exhausted of power, and heads back home. Inside Croft Manor, Winston opens a secret passageway to the family crypt, and Lara heads down there with him, Zip, and Alistair. She examines her grandfather's grave and finds a secret passage underneath. After heading through, Lara finds a secret office with the gauntlet and a recording device. Lara plays the message to find that it is addressed to her, from her father, explaining the room she is standing in contains everything his team recovered from Thailand. He makes note to warn Lara about the protectors of the gauntlets, called Thralls, who killed several of his team before they were able to capture them. However, Lara finds their cages broken and now empty. Lara then finds images of the map he destroyed, to protect the knowledge from falling into Natlas' hands, and she takes them before activating the second gauntlet binding that to herself as well. Lara is then attacked by the Thralls, but she is able to defeat them in combat to return back upstairs. However, just as she's about to reach the main hall, she feels the rumble of a large explosion, and fire begins to fill the hallway she's in. She works her way through the burning mansion to reach the main hall, finding Winston and Zip, just before the latter suddenly pulls a gun on Lara and fires at her. After he runs out of bullets, Zip reveals that he saw Lara open the retina scanning locks to her vault before setting fire to her own house, shooting at him, then escaping with Amanda's wraith stone. Lara tells Winston and Zip to leave while they can, then heads to the security area to watch the surveillance camera footage. When she gets into the security room, however, she turns to see her own reflection, or at least what appears to be. As she gets closer, she realizes it is a near-identical doppelganger of herself, and it quickly turns to shoot a nearby Alistair. Lara attempts to attack her doppelganger, but it quickly bests her in any attempt before escaping the mansion. Lara runs over to Alistair to try to help him, but despite her efforts, he proclaims that he'll see her in Avalon before dying from his injuries. Outside, Winston and Zip watch the doppelganger run off, before seeing the real Lara walk out carrying the lifeless body of Alistair. Zip asks Lara what it was, and Lara only responds that she had seen something similar of Natla's creation years ago, but this one is far more dangerous. This leads them to conclude that Natla and Amanda must be working together in some capacity, and Lara determines her next destination should be the location of Thor's belt, southern Mexico. Zip protests carrying on like normal with Alistair dead, but Lara exclaims that she needs a god's weapon to kill another god, and walks off to deal with the authorities. Later, in southern Mexico, Lara finds more Norse inscriptions and a statue, 
this time of the Midgard serpent Jormungandr, which is spewing its venom, called Eiter, which produces the thralls. After fighting her way through more of the creatures, she retrieves Thor's belt, binding it to herself before escaping the ruins back to the surface. Zip calls and informs Lara that he enhanced her father's images of the map and sends her coordinates to Jan Mayen Island off the coast of Norway, where she should find the final relic, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. On the island, Lara finds Odin's Hall, Valhalla, and after fighting through more powerful thrall, she finds Mjolnir, and with her acquired power, she is able to wield it. Now armed with the power to kill a god, Lara tracks down Amanda's second ship and climbs aboard, slaying her mercenaries with ease thanks to her mighty hammer. Lara enters the chamber with Natla's prison, and the Atlantean reveals that while she can tell Lara where the path to Avalon is, she'll need Natla's help to perform a ritual to open it. Lara agrees to a shaky partnership, but as she attempts to break open the enclosure, Amanda arrives with the doppelganger to stop her. Amanda holds up her wraith stone, but as she goes to use it, the doppelganger suddenly grabs her and tosses her over a nearby railing, and she falls into the bowels of the ship. Lara moves to attack the doppelganger with her hammer, but it is able to escape. Lara then takes out her frustration by swinging at the prison enclosure, breaking it, but she stops herself from killing Natla. She then allows her new partner to leave, and the pair agree to meet at the location of Helheim, under the Arctic Sea. Lara arrives at the location and blows a hole in the ice, submerging below to find yet another structure with Norse inscriptions. She finds Natla inside, executing the ritual to open a pathway. Natla then flies off, allowing Lara to use the power of the hammer to finish opening the pathway. Lara enters Helheim and finally finds her mother, Amelia Croft. Initially delighted to have finally found the woman she long thought dead, her excitement quickly turns to dismay as Amelia faces her to reveal she has been transformed into a thrall. Lara, finally coming to the realization that her mother is long gone, pulls her pistols and fires, knocking her back into a pool of Eiter below. Just then, Natla arrives and revels in Lara's pain. She then reveals that after learning of Amelia's disappearance years prior, she had manipulated her husband, Richard Croft, into working for Natla before killing him for his betrayal. She then used his daughter to finish his work and lead her to Helheim. Lara goes to swing the hammer at Natla, but the doppelganger soon arrives, knocking it out of her hands and subduing her. Natla then walks off to raise the Midgar serpent while Lara fights with the doppelganger. Much to Lara's surprise, Amanda arrives and uses the Wraith Stone to stop the doppelganger, throwing her over the ledge into the Eiter pit below. Amanda states that while she still harbors disdain for Lara, she has to help her to stop Natla to prevent the end of the world. Lara then runs off to stop Natla, while Amanda stays behind to hold the thralls at bay. Lara finds Natla, who reveals that the Midgard Serpent was actually a metaphor for the system of tectonic ridges on the ocean floor, and the relic she is currently activating will cause the Earth to split and spew the Serpent's poison into the air, triggering Ragnarok and Natla's sought-after Seventh Age. Lara is able to use Mjolnir to begin destroying the machine, just as Amanda's fight brings her into the chamber. Natla notices Amanda and takes her out with a bolt of power, knocking her onto the floor. Lara continues to eliminate the machine's support structures, forcing Natla to attempt to keep it standing herself. While she's distracted, however, Lara throws Mjolnir at her, breaking the platform she stands on, sending her into the Eiter pit below as the giant column of the machine follows her in. Lara runs over to help up Amanda, and the two realize that they're trapped, but Lara spots the stone dais that transported her mother there, and she is forced to trust Amanda as the two work together to activate the portal and teleport back to the temple in Tibet. Lara looks to the ground and grabs the sword, as her and Amanda have a quick standoff. Amanda determines it's not worth her trouble and walks off, leaving Lara for good. Lara then finds the pages from her journal she left in the temple as a child, and says one final goodbye to her mother before leaving. In Helheim, Lara's doppelganger awakens, having just barely avoided the Eiter Pit by falling onto a stone platform. She makes her way to the stone dais to find Natla, whose own exposure to the Eiter has given her a thrall-like physical appearance. She issues a command, Akishivar, a spell used to control the thrall which allows her to command the doppelganger to take her back to its birthplace. 
The doppelganger takes Natla back to a giant, Iter-powered machine relic. After restoring the power to the machine, the doppelganger returns to Natla, who commands it to find Lara Croft and kill her, before killing itself afterwards, so Natla never has to see Lara's face again. Four days later, Lara has returned to the remains of Croft Manor and has found her way back to her father's hidden office beneath the family crypt. She learns that her father had not only discovered an artifact that creates thralls, but also learned of a phrase that could be used to control them. Lara finds the artifact in an eiter filled chamber, and learns the phrase is Akishiver. She is immediately able to use it when a thrall arrives behind her, which she stops in its tracks by using the phrase. Lara's doppelganger then arrives as well, and Lara commands the thrall to kill it. The doppelganger runs right through it, forcing Lara to exclaim the phrase once more in a panic. This stops the doppelganger, as Lara realizes she now controls her dark shadow. Lara commands that the doppelganger ignore any further commands, and releases it from a life of slavery to others. After acknowledging the command, Lara instead asks that the doppelganger make sure Natla suffers before it runs off to return to its creator. The doppelganger returns to the machine and destroys its power source before causing Natla's healing pod to fall to the ground below, crushing her. The doppelganger returns to her and Natla tries to order it to save her, but the doppelganger simply watches with a smile as Natla drowns in a pool of eiter. Lara continues her adventures into the future, finding various relics and meeting new friends and foes. Namely, she meets an ancient Mayan soldier named Totek, who she helps defeat the returning evil force of Zolotl, who was released from the Mirror of Smoke by a warlord named Vasco. Later, she befriends an up-and-coming archaeologist named Carter Bell. The pair share several adventures, including stopping a politician named Andrew Green from using an ivory relic to awaken an ancient demon called the Unnameable, uncovering a conspiracy regarding an ancient blade, as well as stopping the Egyptian god Set from spreading chaos and returning him and the spirit of the god Osiris back to the land of the dead. This brings us to the end of this branch of Tomb Raider lore, as Crystal Dynamics rebooted the series one more time in 2013 with a more modern, gritty take. And don't worry, we'll tell you all about it in the next and final part of this series, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you can catch that as soon as we're done with it. In the meantime, if you wanted to check out what I've made so far for my ongoing Tomb Raider retrospective deep dive of every game from the core design era up to the Survivor era, then be sure to check out my channel too. I'll even be covering some custom levels made by some very dedicated and passionate and talented fans in the future as well. So if you do end up stopping by, be sure to say hi in the comments and let me know that you're there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and comment on what you would want to see next. Also consider supporting on Patreon or becoming a member on YouTube, links in the description, with a huge thanks to those folks on screen now. Another huge thanks goes to Steve of War. Be sure to check out his channel in the description and on screen now. And of course, another thanks to Displate. Check them out in the description as well. See you next time.